look at what this engine is gonna do in a second. That's what reverse thrusters looked like on Boeing 737s back in the days. Well, back in the days, meaning earlier this year, because this version of the Boeing 737, the Dash 200, is still in operation in a handful of places. We actually had the honor to fly on it before, from Victoria Falls to Harare on Air Zimbabwe back in 2018. And today, we'll take you along on another flight on it. This time we're in Venezuela, and we'll stay within Venezuela on this 50-minute domestic flight from El Vigia to Caracas aboard Avior Airlines' last remaining Boeing 737-200. Built in 1984, this plane turns 40 years old next year. Let's see what it's like to fly on it. Our journey starts in the state of Merida in western Venezuela, heading to Juan Pablo Perez Alfonso Airport. The airport is tiny, only offering a handful of daily flights to Caracas and the occasional flight to Por la Mar. Despite its size, Avior Airlines put this sleek gold logo behind their check-in desk. This is where you enter the building, and that's really the entire departure hall. Over there, the luggage is checked by hand before you can drop it off at the counter, and the security check was in line with what you just saw. But hey, Avior Airlines even tags your cabin luggage. The tickets also look like they do elsewhere, and the airport even has a charging spot for your phone. And yet, out there is a 1990-built McDonnell Douglas MD-81 of Lazer Airlines, La Linea Aérea de Servicio Ejecutivo Regional. What an unusual blend of old and new. And over there is our ride to Caracas, YV-2823, a 1984-built Boeing 737-200, which operated for Delta Airlines until 2005 and joined Avior's fleet in 2008. This photo is of our exact plane, N318DL. Special thanks to Peter for letting me show his image. The Boeing 737-200 was first delivered in 1968, and over 1,000 of them were produced until 1988. From 1971 onwards, all Boeing 737-200s carried the designation Advanced, as Boeing implemented some improvements into the model such as increased fuel capacity, automatic brakes, and a better hydraulic system. Boeing also produced the Boeing 737-200C, C standing for Combi Operations, meaning some of the plane is for passengers and some for cargo, as well as the Boeing 737-200QC, standing for Quick Change, which could be used for both cargo and passenger operations and was able to be converted back and forth very rapidly. Our plane even has three rows of business class seats in a 2-2 configuration up front, followed by a standard 3-3 configured economy class cabin. From what I could find, this is the exact configuration Delta Airlines used, so it's likely those are still the original seats, albeit with newer covers. I was able to get the best seat in the house, if you're an aviation geek, right next to the quintessential Pratt & Whitney JT-8D engine's rear. The seats come with a standard tray table, a seat back pocket, and good legroom. They also offer standard recline, and there's still an ashtray in the armrest, but smoking isn't even allowed here, thankfully. I do not want to imagine what flying was like with the entire plane going through one cigarette after another. Okay. 
exceptuando aquellos pasajeros que se encuentren ubicados en las salidas de emergencia. Look at those old overhead panels. It's like flying in a museum. And now we're off to Caracas. I'll shut up now so you can enjoy the exhilarating sound of the engines. Despite the age of the plane, the cabin was in a surprisingly good state. The dark grey cabin dividers give it an elegant look. The flight is only around 50 minutes and there is no in-flight service offered. The crew didn't even bother to turn off the seatbelt signs. Avior offers an in-flight magazine. Nothing too exciting, but they have their route network in it. It's fairly small with mostly domestic routes, but it hasn't always been like that. The airline used to fly to Miami and even at one point wanted to start service to Europe, but ended up on the European blacklist, meaning it's not allowed to fly to or over Europe due to safety concerns. For this, Avior had an Airbus A340-300 in its fleet until 2019 which was then transferred to state-owned Conviasa, about which we also have a video coming up soon, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel. brief visit to the lavatory and wow, what a retro experience. Overall, flying on Avior Airlines was surprisingly nice. 
the cabin of this ancient 737 was in a great state. The legroom was good, the seats were comfortable, and I mean as an aviation geek, it's just an amazing experience to be able to fly a Boeing 737-200 in 2023. Fewer than 50 remain in service, with most of them flying in Canada because of the unique gravel kits offered for this type. This set of modifications makes it possible to land the plane on unpaved runways. Most notable is the gravel deflector near the nose gear, which keeps stones from hitting the fuselage. Special thanks to Alex Preglovsky for allowing me to share his footage. Definitely check out his video about flying on one of those 737-200s in Canada, even departing from a gravel runway. It's amazing. With that, welcome to Caracas Simón Bolívar International Airport. Thank you very much for coming along today's journey. I hope you have enjoyed it and will join us again on another trip soon. Special thanks to our channel supporters, thanks to whom we're able to continuously expand the number of airlines shown on our channel and even dive into some of the rather little known ones like today, bringing the total number of airlines shown to 237, more than any other blog, written or video anywhere on the internet. Whether you are a channel sponsor, a subscriber or simply passing by for this one video, thank you very much for watching. And if you're up for another video, why not take a look at this trip report we did a couple of years ago aboard an Ilyushin IL-96 of Kubana from Madrid to Havana. Thanks again, have a great day and safe travels.